Hey creative friends, welcome to my channel. And in this video, I'm in my craft room, my sewing craft room, because I'm going to show you how to make something that's super clever, super cute, and maybe a little bit silly, but it's fun. So what I'm going to show you how to do is make a shoestring. These are adorable little shoestrings and you can make them so easy. See, I made a couple of these shoestrings and I'm just using scrap fabric. So see how I had this, this fabric's got little cherries on it? Made it into this adorable shoestring. The secret to these super cool shoestrings is they actually have the little plastic piece, which is called an aglet, on the end. And you would never know. I mean, you would think that those were professional shoestrings, and I'm going to show you how to do it. And I was telling the gals at work today about making shoestrings, and they're like, why would you want to do that? Well, why wouldn't you want to do that? Because these are adorable. And you can make them any link you want. So let's say if maybe you've got a, a baby outfit and you've got some matching fabric, you can make some little shoestrings for that. You could just make some because they're fun, uh, something to change is different. And you know what? Even they were saying today at work, like uh, shoes anymore, are either Velcro or slip-ons. But quite frankly, I think if you start making these shoestrings, you're going to go out and buy a pair of shoes just to wear them. Little white sneakers, they'd be adorable. But I'm going to tell you, oh, and another thing, one of the things is that these kind of shoestrings are like classic shoestrings. You tie these, they're going to stay tied. Seems to me anymore, these new shoes come out with these kind of, they're like a round cable kind of thing. And I don't even care. These are my Keens. I wear these all the time. But I have to double knot these because within an hour or so of wearing them, they're going to come untied. And it's those round shoestrings that do it. So I'll tell you what you need for these shoestrings. You need scrap fabric. So this is the perfect little craft for people who are quilters or they do a lot of uh, fabric crafts because you know those of us that kind of have a lot of fabric we can't get rid of the little scraps you're always keeping it looking for uh, something to do with it and this is the perfect project so I made these two great shoestrings out of this piece of scrap fabric and I could probably make tons more so all you'll need for this project is some fabric and then you'll need to cut that fabric in long, however long you want your um, your shoestring. You'll need it to cut it in one inch strips. Now you can do that with a rotary cutter and a ruler, or you can just do that with scissors. It doesn't matter as long as you have them in one inch strips. The other thing, so I've got two one inch strips that are already cut for you guys so that we can get started on that. You'll need an iron. And the secret to why, you, it's a sewing machine, unless you want to do them by hand, you need a way to sew it. The secret to making these amazing are the little, these are for soldering, and they're called heat shrink tubing. Now, I use the heat shrink tubing that is one eighth inch because I'm going to start with a strip of fabric that is one inch wide, and then we're going to fold it in on itself twice, what will make it a quarter of an inch, and that will leave it to be this wide. And then this little piece will go over the end. And all you do is slip it on there and heat it. And I have one of the heating guns. I, this is actually originally from uh, when I was doing card making. And I did embossing. So you can use, there's all, people have these for all different kind of crafts. And this is just a generic heat gun. So that's what you need. You need fabric. You need an iron. You need a way to sew it. You need these little um, heat tubing, heat shrink tubing and an embossing gun. So in a second, I'm going to turn you around. I'm going to show you how I fold the strips of fabric so that you can watch me do that. All right, I've got my, um, my strips of fabric here on my little ironing pad with my little mini iron. You can use a regular iron. But what you want to do is you want to put it the wrong side up. See how that's dark? And then there's the right side, or right side and wrong side. And then some people will fold it in half so that they get that center seam and then open it and fold the sides in to meet on that seam. But if you're good, you can just fold the sides in to meet at a quarter, so that will be a quarter of an inch. So they're folded in, so you can see, I don't know if you can see that there, let's show you. So you can fold those in side to side like that, and just line them up so they're lined up in the center, and then we're gonna iron that, okay? So I'm gonna iron this. And then it's super simple because there we have it. See how it's folded in? And then I'm going to fold it up here. And you can see how once you get it started, it's really easy to fold it in and then to iron. You can give it a little, little bit of steam. 
And I have one of these things. This is called a Taylor's Clapper. Just a piece of wood. You put it on there and press down, and it really helps the, the seam crease in there, or the fold crease in there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish both of my strips, both pieces, and then I'll bring you back when those are all folded down. All right, so I've got that folded with the two sides folded in, and now I'm just going to fold it in half, and I'm going to iron all the way down to make it just a quarter wide. So the two sides are folded into the center to meet in the middle, and I'm going to fold it in half and iron it that way. Okay, I've got these pieces folded. So they're folded where the two sides came into the center, and then folded in half again. And now I'm going to stitch right along the edge where the two sides come together. You can probably see how close on this little red cherry, see the stitch line, how close it is. Super close to the edge. And I'm going to show you a little trick on how to get something this tiny started under your presser fit. Because that can be difficult. Um, and there's a couple places where it didn't line up right. So I'm just going to touch those up and make sure that those are lined up right. So I'll get my iron over here and just go through and look at these and touch them up and make sure that those edges are uh, flush along the side. Okay, I want to bring you around and show you where I'm going to put this so that you can see on my presser foot. See that little notch right there? I'm going to put it so that it lines up right on that little notch like that. Let's see if you can see that even better. I'm going to put it right in there so just barely on the edge. See there? It's going to go right along there on that presser foot. But I'm going to show you a trick about getting um, get, getting this started. So when you have something this tiny, if you're a new sewer, this is not intended for seasoned sewers because, oh, well, it might be a trick that you, you know, never thought of. But when you put your presser foot down, you want to catch the edge of the fabric. It may not uh, grab that, and you're kind of pushing it, and it gets kind of messed up. A little trick is to push it in an inch or so. And then reverse, come back, and then all you do is lift it up, pull it out, grab that. So now you have two strings. So you put it back under your presser foot now with the two strings. You can put it right on the edge like that and pull the strings to get it started. So there you go. I think you can see that, yep. There you go. See, you can pull that to get it started and it doesn't bunch up under the beginning of your presser foot. So now I'm just going along here really quick. You just want to stay inside enough that you don't come off the edge. Um, if you go in toward the center a little bit, that's okay because you're not going to miss the edge because this is each side is folded all the way in. So it's not like you're going to have a little edge that pops out. And there's shoestrings for Pete's sake. They don't have to be totally perfect. Be tied on your shoe, but this little pattern with the blue and gray I think would be super cute, like a gray sweatsuit, maybe white sneakers. Ooh, that wasn't a good thought. Um, maybe like a turquoise colored top that would be cute. So, there we go. And I'm not worried about it uh, being knotted because that's gonna get hooked in the little plastic aglet. So there we go, I have that stitched along and I'm gonna do the next one. All right, I've got both of the shoestrings done. Trim the little, the little string off the end. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these little tubes. Now these little tubes, like I said, you can get them there for soldering. Uh, you can probably get them at uh, stores that sell electric things, supplies, hardware stores. They're not, they're not um, a rare thing. So you could even just Google or go to Amazon and check out heat shrink tubing. They'll have all different sizes. And you can get them in different colors too, like black or red, different colors. But I like the clear ones. So what I'm going to do now is I like my aglets to be a little longer. These are about half an inch. And I have my little ruler. And I just measure that up half an inch. You know, I take the tube and hold it there to half an inch and then snip it. But I kind of want them to be a little longer, so I could make them three quarters of an inch. And because these little tubes are six inches long, it makes it even easier. I'm just going to cut it in half. And there's a three inch piece. 
So there's a half. So there's a three inch piece. And then I'm going to cut each one of these in half and half again. And that will give me four three quarter inch pieces. So there's half again. So there is a half. That's going to be my aglet on one pair of shoestrings. I feel like that's going to slip out of my hand. There we are. And then this one, fold in half. Now I'm going to turn this on so this can get hot. I'm just going to turn that on. I don't think these will work with just a uh, hair dryer. Well, I'm going to turn that off so you can hear. I don't think those will work with a hair dryer. You actually have to have a heat gun. So now I'm just going to take this little piece and fold it in half. And then kind of shimmy it into the tube. And I'm going to slide the end out a little bit so that I can trim that off because it's got the little raw ends. So now I'm going to turn this on and I'm just going to heat that little tube. So we'll sit here and heat it for a second. It doesn't take very long. Once this is hot, it's not really hot yet. And actually, if I put a longer aglet on there and after I trimmed it, I didn't like the length. I wanted it shorter. I could just snip this off. So you can see it's already kind of shrinking up. And this is just cool. You know, you could make shoestrings. Like if you're one of those people that does like little farmer market things or you have a little booth and you do craft uh, fabric crafts, why not use some of these and make little shoestrings? Like you could probably sell them for a couple bucks a pair. They're kind of cute. So I'm going to sit here and keep heating this. And it'll probably take a minute or so more. And I don't feel like you guys want to watch it. You can see that it's starting to shrink down. But I'm going to get it good and tight on there. Actually, it's doing pretty good. I'm going to get down there toward the edge. And if you touch it before it's done, it'll be a little bit tacky. And that's okay because you can kind of squeeze the end in down there so it kind of dips into the fabric a little. Just makes it a little tighter. So I'm going to keep shrinking this. I'm going to shrink it until it's just where I want it. And I have to focus on the end because the end will tend to stay not shrunk if you don't focus on it. So let's just keep doing this. Almost done. All right. Only takes a couple seconds, well, a couple minutes, once the heat gun's hot. And then, let me turn it off. So then I'm going to give it a little squeeze. Kind of pinch it on there. And then I'm going to clip the end off right there at the end of the aglet. Boom. Oh, I need the better scissors. Here we are. There we are. So now I have a shoestring end. So I'm going to go ahead and see that's like that little plastic coating on your shoestring. And if this was too long, I could just cut it off again like just a little bit shorter if I wanted, like right there. So that turns out perfect. And so I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of these and I'll come back to you when all four ends are cut. Okay, there you go. Aren't those adorable? These are super cute little shoestrings and I love them. Look at that. So much fun to have these shoestrings in your shoes with the right kind of tips on them, they're like real, real shoestrings. There, no one would ever know these were homemade. And they're so cute. Look at that. I just love them. They're so adorable. And they're going to look great in little white, maybe sneakers or kids' shoes or baby shoes. In the summertime, they're cute. So, there you go. Tonight, you learned to make shoestrings. If you didn't already know. There you go. So I hope you try these, and I hope that's a great way for you to use up some of your scraps. Look at that. I've already got two pairs of shoestrings. And honestly, um, these probably took 20 minutes to make. It wasn't bad at all. So um, they're a fun little project, and I hope you guys try it. And if you make some, post some pictures over on my Facebook page of the shoestrings that you made. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.